Good morning, my name is Chong Yan Gu. Uh, today I will show you the physical and ball functions for smart meter security. Uh, the uh, Cisco says there will be 50 billion collected uh, devices in 2020. And uh, Intel also said, reported that there will be 200 billion connected devices in 2020. Either way means uh, the IoT will revolutionize our lives. For example, um, when you are approaching the door, the door will be unlocked automatically. Another example, for example, the car will be automatically warmed up when you send a message to the car you are, uh, you are on the way. Uh, so all of these can benefit our lives, but, but there will be many threats. For example, uh, two researchers report that they can control a car uh, 20 miles away just by the radio update service. And uh, a hacker uh, reported that he can simply control the light, the, the light bubble turn on and turn off from at his home, uh, in his home, but he is far from uh, in his office. And um, uh, some people also can uh, use the uh, Nest thermostats to easily access the network. And just the last week, um, the researchers from the University of Birmingham, they reported that they can break over 100 million Volkswagen car security system, and they can directly drive the car away without any keys. So, The, the security of most products is very, very weak. And uh, the reason is that the traditional uh, strat uh, security strategy is very complex, based on the complex uh, computation algorithms. So that means it's very hard to, in to be implemented on the low-cost devices. And um, in the future, there will be high connectivities between the devices in the IoT uh, network. So that means even a small, low-end devices can be used and can be hacked to, to, uh, to be used as the, uh, to access the network. So, uh, and also, uh, for the untrusted uh, supply chains, they can produce the counterfeited products. Um, so the important thing is uh, the effective authentication mechanism is very essential uh, to protect uh, the security of the network. And, but the question is how to ensure uh, the connected device, uh, uh, the device you connected is trustable. So physical ankle-lumbar function is an alternative method uh, to protect the security of the product. So the path um, is the circuit uses manufacturing process variations on the chips to generate a unique digital fingerprint. So you can imagine that uh, every people have the fingerprint, every person has fingerprint, but we also can use this path to give every chief, every product, the electronic fingerprint. So for example, we can see from this gram, uh, diagram, uh, there's a chip, uh, this chip we have, has implemented the path on it. So when we send a challenger to this chip, this chip can give us a response. For many other, uh, the same chips from the same manufacturer with the same manufacturing processes, and uh, they all have the same paths implemented on them, we, send, we also send the same challenge to them. They will give us totally different 
responses. So we sent another challenge on the, the same uh, principle. We, the, the chips will give us totally different responses. So uh, from this simple example, uh, we can see that the path can generate a very um, unique, unclonable case. And also, the most important thing is this K just directly generates from the chips. So we doesn't need any memory to store the case. And it's very easy to evaluate. It's uh, temper resistant. And uh, uh, the most, uh, and uh, another thing is it's very hard to predict because it's just based on the manufacturing process variations. So it doesn't need any other extra fabrication cost. That means it is very low cost. It is suitable for the, uh, especially for the low cost devices. Uh, for this Sparks project, um, as we mentioned, this the path technology is a very high level, uh, can support very high level security. So it doesn't need uh, non-volatile memory. So uh, in other words, means it's very secure. Uh, secure. Uh, for example, uh, you probably have heard the seventh channel attacks. So this one, the path can be resistant to uh, as, as the, the seventh channel attacks. And uh, it can also provide a very low, um, sorry, the lightweight authentication. Uh, that means it is very low cost. Uh, for this project, uh, to evaluate uh, the path, we set up the test bed. Uh, in the, the architecture of uh, this test bed, uh, we have 234 path nodes. Each node, uh, each path based on one node. The node is uh, one digit basis, F, uh, basis three uh, board. And we also have uh, four gateways to uh, link uh, up to 60 nodes to uh, one gateway. And we also have one host server. So that means the users can use it, this test by the remotely just through the, net, uh, the network. So for the much details about this test bed, uh, later you can see the demo and Robert will show you much more details about this. Um, this is the practical uh, module, form module the diagram shows and we have one module here later uh, in the demo. So I just uh, briefly introduced this here. Uh, we have uh, four modules uh, to implement 234 path nodes. And uh, for each module, we have uh, up to 60 uh, basis three balls, uh, 10 hubs, so one Raspberry Pi, and uh, one power supply. And uh, the the shape and the size we set up is like this just because it is uh, suitable for the temperature test that we will put it into the ambition uh, chamber, put uh, them into the oven for the temperature test. Um, so far, we have three different types of uh, path results. Uh, one is Pico path, uh, one is RO path, one is the TBR path, and today I just show you the Pico path results to show how the how do we evaluate and how uh, the result looks like. Um, so there are many metrics to evaluate uh, paths. For example, uniqueness, robustness, uh, uniformity, bit aliasing. Uh, today uh, I will show you two most important. Uh, uh, metrics. So one is uniqueness, another one is the robustness. So the uniqueness represents how difference between two chips. 
ideally it should be 50%. That means the challenge, uh, at least the 50% uh, difference between two challenges. And for the robustness represent how reliable uh, is this path design. So to do this test, uh, we sent the same challenge 1,000 times to the same chip. And uh, we compare the responses between them. Ideally, it should be 100%. That means fully reliable. Uh, we can see that uh, for the pickle path, we uh, got the result. Uh, the uniqueness is 48%. Robustness is 98%, uh, which is uh, uh, very close to the ideal value. Um, another thing I want to see here is the form. Uh, this is the floor plan of uh, uh, path implementation on the FPGA. So we can see the blue color on this diagram is the uh, hardware resources usage for the path implementation. We can see that it's very, very small. And from the experiment, we got it's only less than 1%. So this also proved that uh, the path is uh, very suitable for the low-cost uh, devices application. OK, so we introduced our paths, and uh, we can see that the path is a very good choice for the Spark project because it's, uh, it doesn't need any um, memory uh, to store the keys. It is based on the manufacturing process variations. It's easy to ev evaluate, and uh, uh, you can uh, get the response at any time. And we also set up the uh, path test bed um, to evaluate any path designs. And we already had uh, um, three different paths, uh, the result of uh, three different paths. And all uh, for the other path designs, we are uh, currently we are implementing and uh, collecting data. And uh, so the path is a very uh, good choice for not only for smart meter, I think it will be also a good choice for the future any IoT based uh, uh, connected devices. Um, so that's me. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions?